Today we're taking a look at the 2024 Razer Blade 16 and look, just like most other gaming laptops that have come out onto the market in 2024, not a lot has changed. Like you're pretty much getting the exact same laptop as last year. Like don't get me wrong, there are a few new changes with this version, but they're not significant enough to like really get excited about. If you are buying this, I gotta commend Razer. I do like their build quality. I feel like this is just one of the better built 16 inch gaming laptops that are currently on the market. The downfall to this, it is a bit heavier. Like it is 5.4 pounds, which is heavier than something like the Zephyrus G16. It does collect a lot of fingerprints on the black anodized aluminum but it just feels very solid to touch. The good news though this year is that you can finally get it in a mercury color, which is probably a bit more exciting. I'd prefer that color over this just because you're not gonna see any fingerprints at all. Just like the previous Blade 16, the Razer logo does light up, which is a nice touch, and you do have a good amount of IO. On the left-hand side, you still have your proprietary connector, two USB-A ports, a Thunderbolt 4 port. This is not Thunderbolt 5. If you want Thunderbolt 5, you gotta buy the Blade 18 instead. Combo audio jack. And then on the right-hand side, you have your Nobleton lock, or Kensington lock rather, HDMI 2.1, USB-A, and a Type-C port. You also get a full-size SD card slot, which is really, really handy. Besides that, you open up the same easily with one hand. You have this beautiful keyboard. The keys are the same. The typing experience is the same. There's not a lot of difference in terms of the way it feels. Unlike other manufacturers that are replacing the control key with a co-pilot key, Razer decided not to do that. So you just get a very clean looking keyboard. I also love their RGB. Like I still think it looks really, really good compared to the competitor's version that's currently on the market. Sticker placement, not too bad. You know, it's just THX and Intel. The Intel is very small there, but it is crooked. I would have loved a little bit of uh, straighter lines over here. Pull out the ruler, pull out the protractor. Let's get things right, sticker guy. Touchpad, absolutely massive, like ridiculously massive, but it's not a haptic touchpad. And I feel like for this price point, this touchpad should be haptic. I think it would just refine the experience slightly more. Now it's still using the same four speakers as they did in the previous model. They're great speakers, they're not the best, but they're great. Is it gonna beat out a MacBook Pro 16? No, but they sound good for a gaming laptop. Now the biggest upgrade to the 2024 model happens to be the display because you can now spec it with a OLED display. Like this is a 16 inch QHD plus OLED display. It supports a G-Sync. It gets about 420 nits of brightness and it just has incredible contrast, very deep dark blacks, like playing games on this just look so good and same with watching content. Now here's the thing, you can also still buy the mini LED display. And look, the mini LED display is absolutely awesome too. The advantage to the mini LED display over the OLED display is that it's a matte display. So you get a lot less reflections, okay? The other advantage is that the mini LED display also gets significantly brighter. Like this thing can hit 1000 nits, whereas the OLED display kind of tops out at 420. Now, personally, I like the OLED display better. That's just me personally. But if you watch like a lot of HDR content and you are in areas where there's lots of sunlight, then the mini LED display might be better for you. But if you're like really into like gaming, you still watch content, you just love OLED, you can't go wrong with this guy. Now, I feel like the mini LED version is there for people who are still worried about burn-in, but the way we use laptops is very different compared to other devices that are on all the time, like a TV. I'm not as afraid of burn-in on a laptop, but I'll leave that up to you. Now, there's no fingerprint scanner. There never has been on the 16-inch model, but you do have Windows Hello, which will use your face to log you in, and you have a little switch over here if you want to physically disable the webcam. So this is what the 1080p camera looks like. You guys let me know how I look, and most importantly, how do the microphones sound? The second change is the CPU that's inside of here. We now get an i9 14th gen Intel CPU paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a 16-inch OLED display, and my unit costs about $4,200 US. Definitely not the cheapest 16 inch gaming laptop. Like you are paying a premium for this. But here's the thing. The performance compared to last year's model is identical. Like I mean identical. You're just not gonna see that much of a difference in terms of performance. Single core speeds are identical. Multi-core speeds are identical. Even last year's model did slightly better in Mozilla's Firefox compile test. Like it beat out this newer version by two minutes. Photoshop 
was pretty much close. The only area where this one kind of won out in was probably Adobe Premiere Pro. And that's kind of the story with most gaming laptops in 2024. You're just getting a similar experience. CPU changes haven't been that significant and we're not getting any new GPUs. So if you're buying this to game, you're gonna get the same FPS, regardless if you're gaming at 2560 by 1600 or 1920 by 1200, the performance is almost identical. Sometimes the 2023 model was winning out and sometimes this guy was winning out. I should also mention one more thing about the mini LED display is that it's dual. So like you can go back and forth between 4K at let's say 120 Hertz or 1920 by 1200 at 240 Hertz. So you get the best of both worlds. I don't think it's that big of a deal with this OLED display because it's already paired at QHD plus and I feel like that's a good place to be for most games. But I've dropped down the resolution to 1920 by 1200 on this and it still looks really, really good. Again, just like last year, the TGP of the GPU bumps up to 175 watts, so no difference there. Average core clock speeds are literally neck and neck, same thing. And then of course the average CPU temps is probably a little better on this year's model. Like you're just getting better CPU temps overall compared to last year's version, which kind of hung higher in the 80s, whereas this one seems to be more well balanced. Fan noise is also very identical. So like if you're putting this thing on turbo mode, which is actually a new mode for this version, like last year's model software didn't have a turbo mode, you're gonna get fan noise that's in the 50s. But of course, just like every other gaming laptop, you can reduce the fan noise if you change the settings and if you don't mind losing a little bit of performance to go along with it. Now the internals are identical to the previous model. You're still getting that beautiful vapor chamber cooler. I love how everything is completely black. You do have two slots for RAM. Obviously you can upgrade this to like 96 if you really wanted to. The other change, the third and final change to the 2024 model is the Wi-Fi card. It now comes with a Wi-Fi 7 card compared to Wi-Fi 6E. You do have two slots for your drives. One is under here, but you can place a second one right above it. So you can have two storage options. And then of course you have a big 95 watt our battery, but I just didn't get really good battery life with this. Like it's just not meant to be used off the charger. So here's the bottom line, just like I've been saying in most other videos, if you can find a 2023 model for a significantly cheaper price, buy it. Cause you're just not gonna see a difference in terms of performance and everyday use. They're literally identical. The only reason to buy the 2024 version is if you wanted an OLED display on the 16 inch laptop. Like that's the only reason to buy it. Like if you have the mini LED version already, not much of an upgrade for you, nothing to get jealous about. The good news though, is that this OLED display is actually a little bit cheaper than the mini LED one. So if that's something you want, then you might save some money there. But overall, see if you can get a 2023 model instead. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.